I now call this meeting to order the regular meeting for the City of Seaside Parks and Rec Commission, Monday, August 19th, 2024. Uh, roll call. Commissioner Lobo? Here. Commissioner Walton? Commissioner Moulton? Present. Commissioner White? Commissioner Gaines? Vice Chair Nielsen? Here. Chair Maxwell? Present. For the record, we have a quorum. Okay. Item number two is public comment. Members of the public wishing to address the commission on matters within the jurisdiction of the city of Seaside, but not on this agenda, may do so during the public comment period for up to three minutes. Comments on specific agenda items are heard under that item. For the public record, please state your name. Members in the chamber, if you're wishing to make public comment, please approach the podium. <laughs> Members on Zoom, if you'd wish to make public comment, please use the raise your hand feature or dial star nine if you're calling from a telephone. Okay, seeing no members in the chambers. There's no one on Zoom either. And no one on Zoom. The public comment is now closed. Okay. Um, I Business item number three is approval of minutes from our previous meeting, July 15th, 2024. I will entertain a motion to approve. I second that motion with some corrections. I did some motion, motion. motion oh. to approve with corrections. So Carla's motion to approve. Okay. And you're gonna second it. Oh, you're you second well, you it said second. First. You seconded it first. I thought you oh no no no. I said I will entertain I'm a sorry. motion. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm very you got it. I'm learning how That's to speak. Okay. Thank you. We need our training. Um, it's been motioned and seconded to approve the minutes from the previous meeting, July 15, 2024, with corrections. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Oh, my. Okay, review of the agenda. If there's any items that arose after the 72 hour posting deadline, this is the point in the meeting where a vote may be taken to add the item to the agenda. A two thirds majority vote is required. Does anyone have any items? No, seeing none, let's move on. Okay, business item five. A is receive an update from BOSPA. Just give me a moment, yes, uh, Ms. Yes. Reese. I need to try and find the presentation. Some reason I accessible to the We do have it in our packets, but you need it to. It's just so much better with color. I, I, I understand. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Appreciate you. Did you send it to me, Terry, by any chance? An email? Um, my name is... No. Put on the reputation? Yes. Here it is. Oh, I see. Awesome.
That's wonderful. Thank you. So I want to, um, I'm Jeannie Reese. I wanted to give you a little update about what we've been doing over the last few months. And um, it's, you know, we've kind of turned into, we've, it, we're experiencing a different kind of uh, climate and a different kind of uh, circumstances than the last time I saw you, obviously. So, oh, I, I just included that because um, it gives us our, you know, uh, idea of our goal. And also, um, it's kind of cool because every time we have a work day, we have goals that we set to. And um, Christine we, uh, Whistler, who is our kind of our you know, person who kind of keeps us going on the work days, you know, writes down our like a little agenda, like you have an agenda. So, uh, and okay, I know that this isn't um, really very glamorous, but it's a really cool example of unity and um, coming together as a community because like on the Wednesday before the, our last work day, um, Christine said, you know, we're running out of buckets. <laughs> And we really need some for our work days because that's how we collect weeds and, you know, we do our work. And it was just so cool to see that on the Saturday work day, after she made this really simple announcement that we got all of those are new buckets that people just brought in because they think what we do is cool. <laughs> so I just wanted to include that. I thought that was kind of cool. And what we're doing now is getting ready for new planting that's gonna happen in like November, December, January, the rainy months. So we're getting rid of old plantings, uh, invasive species when we can. And um, uh, okay, so here's a really good example of um, how we dig trenches and uh, create passive rainwater collection systems. I know I've talked about this before, but this is in the Skull Neal, and there was um, a whole area that was filled with ice plant, right? And ice plant is invasive, it's not native to the area. So what happened was um, we dug trenches and uh, filled that with, um, uh, you know, like uh, material, like uh, small logs and branches in the trenches themselves. And um, then the other part is um, the the berms, the, you know, the, the part that collects the water actually. And then that gets filled with wood chips, you know, all exciting stuff. But, you know, we do that well, and then the plants survive so much better. So that's what it's about. And mulching, lots and lots of mulching um, that always continues. And there's still some weeding to be um, had, you know, uh, in different areas. So that's what we're doing. And, uh, okay, so here's the city projects that these are things that FOSC had recommended that we um, that have been completed. So this particular one, um, this is the upper level of Capra Park, and it had sand that was always intermixed with weeds, and the swing set, which is quite old, looked pretty sad. So the city came in and painted the swing set and put um, wood chips that are ADA approved. And so we're, you know, it looks so much better. It was a, uh, completed in the spring of 2024. And another project that I know that you guys have talked about before was the um, curb, the um, cement curb and the sand at Highland Otis. So that looks really fresh and new. And um, the steward there is hoping to get a new volleyball net, one that's like really, really heavy duty and outdoor that will withstand uh, years and years of use. And so when that is in, everything will be complete there. And um, Havana Solis has seen so much um, cool things. <laughs> so on the left-hand side, you see what it looked like, um, like earlier this summer. And um, we, 
you know, the steward said, actually, after talking to people at work days, you know, what do you want to see in your neighborhood? What could you use in this neighborhood? And they said, um, we could use um, picnic tables and we could use barbecues. And so um, we, that's, that's what we asked for. And that's what we got. And it's, uh, we have six new picnic tables and we have um, uh, three new barbecues. And you can kind of um, tell a little bit, if you look at the picture on the left-hand side, there were more um, stone flower, um, you know, areas, stone enclosures. Thank you, thank you. Um, and that was kind of like making it impossible to put any picnic tables in that area. So we asked for those two that were on the side, you can see one um, to be taken out and they did that. And so the, the six picnic tables fit really, really nicely in three different areas. So, you know, different people can use them at, at different times. And um, just a couple of weeks ago, the company completed, the company who was contracted to do this completed the work by putting in an ADA ramp so that someone could use the table that has uh, an extension to it so that they could, if they were in a wheelchair, you know, wheel up to it and um, be a part of that gathering. You can see here too that um, the dirt was replaced with um, kind of a gravel too to make it an um, a consistent base. And um, yeah, this is just a little bit more of, you can see it without the two flower, um, uh, yeah, the, the, the two areas that, so they look really cool. And then the last picture I have of Havana Solis is, so um, those were two of the older benches. And, you know, we, um, FOSPA had a really nice, it was actually a birthday party for one of our members and we really enjoyed it. You know, it's it's just a really nice, happy place to be. So we're really thrilled that um, we can, that we suggested that. And that's a, a nice thing for the neighborhood. Um, and one of the things that we're doing uh, in, in, we're, anxiously waiting new pathways at Lincoln Cunningham Park. And uh, so there's not much, There's it's hard for us to do new things. So what we did, because we had some, um, someone wanted to uh, give a grant to some pollinator gardens. So what we did was um, we took a kind of a little meandering pathway that we have within our pollinator garden and we had some uh, rocks delivered that we are going to line the pathway with so that it's a little bit more substantial and um, you can kind of tell that there's a sweet little walking path there. And uh, Mescal Neal, so FOSPA got a grant from the Monterey Bay Aquarium and we asked for an underground water tank and um, this was from an employee fund. So it was a um, a grant for $5,000 and it went towards an underground water tank. And Mescal Neal is one of those parks that doesn't have a water supply. So now the stewards can water the new, um, the new plantings um, independently um, and they don't need a water truck to do that. So that really helps on work days and in between work days. So. Uh, we have two really robust vegetable gardens, at one at Capra and one at Havana Solis, that we are really excited about um, because both of them are thriving, doing really, really super well. And um, uh, Blue Zones of Monterey County has generously um, uh, funded a sign that's going to be at Havana Solis, and you can see the... Um, the 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 artwork for the sign on the right hand side, and we're hoping to get some Eagle Scouts to make uh, one of those little kiosks and put a bulletin board in the back so that people can, you know, get information about the garden. And um, okay, so this is uh, going into Havana Solis from Havana, and on the left hand side is a shed also that Blue Zones had sponsored. And so the plan now is to put a mural on the shed and uh, it'll be a joint um, project with Blue Zones and FOSPA. 
And we hope to have a mural that is like um, showing the um, kind of the communication, the scientific communication that happens between the pollinator garden and the veggie garden, you know, through through pollination. So we're excited about that. And let's see. So Blue Zones continues to um, support us. I, I wanted to just mention too that the there is going to be a mural also um, at uh, Nations Market uh, that's just across from Capra. And um, that's going to be really a, a super cool thing, too, because um, I think it's just going to really liven up that entire neighborhood. So we're really indebted to Blue Zones for their support of the veggie gardens and um, our pollinator projects. So we had um, a Blue Zones Day uh, June 1st when the usually there's I'd say between 15 and 20 people come from Blue Zones that uh, are added to our 25 people who usually come to our um, events. And that's, you know, it makes a lot more uh, of a workforce. So it's, we can get a lot done. So we've got one coming up September 14th at Lincoln Cunningham, if we can be there at Lincoln Cunningham because of the construction. And also Havana Solis again on November 16th. And then um, finally, we've got... Um, a the FOSPA is going to be represented at the West End Festival this weekend, uh, and we're going to share a booth with Sustainable Seaside. And um, you know, here's our invitation. You're always welcome to come to a Saturday workday. I know that the um, the city website has our workdays and where we're going to be, and also we've got an awesome um, website of our own friendsofseasidepark.org that you can always look at to find out. We, you know, we have a lot of fun. It's, you know, a lot of great camaraderie and just, it's a, it's a cool place to be. So thank you. Thank you, Dane. Thank you for your presentation. <laughs> Does any of the commissioners have a question or comments? Commissioner Lowell. Um, that sign for Havana Solis, where, where is that going to go? I know there was one already put in that walkway that we saw um, kind of simple. I think the city did that that sign. But where is this one going to go? This uh, right by the veggie garden, because it's one. It's just by, about the veggie, the veggie garden. garden. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Commission Vice Chair Nielsen. Thank you. Great presentation. Thanks. Loved it. Love to see all that. It's a good reminder of how much is going on with uh, people who are stewarding a lot of the parks in our city. And mm. without the stewards, we would not be at this point with a lot of these parks. And I wanted to mention that they asked for buckets because they didn't want to go out and buy new plastic. Yes, and that thank was you. one of the main reasons for doing that, so they could save manufacturing people manufacturing new plastic. Yes, thank and you. That's really helpful. And the birthday was for a ninety-year-old volunteer, so we have all ages out there volunteering, which is very inspiring. So thanks again yeah. for your presentation. Okay, thank you, you're welcome. I do have a question. Does yes. does anyone on your uh, FOSPA committee have a connection to the uh, scouting uh, organizations? Uh, I believe so, but we can always use more connections like that because those kinds of projects come up all the time. Do you have someone in well, mind? Well, Nolly is involved with scouts okay. because every year he holds the uh, Pinewood Derby at his uh, business in the in the auto mall. Oh, okay. And he's real. He's been involved with scouting for many years, so okay. I might reach out to him. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Okay. Uh, do we have public comment after that? Uh, it is a presentation, um, but it's under business. So yes, public comment. Okay, public comment on this item is open. 
Members in the chamber, please approach the podium. Members on Zoom, use the raise your hand feature or dial star nine. Chair, I'm not seeing anybody wishing to make public comment. Okay, uh, public comment is now closed. Okay, uh, business item 5B is conduct a study session and provide recommendations for updates to the Seaside Municipal Code section 2.28 Recreation and Park Commission. Okay, um, I'm gonna um, ask who wants to like lead the charge on this. Commissioner Lobel. <clears throat> So we we set up the study session so that we could talk about what the changes would look like. We briefly talked about them at last meeting, but we we spoke about uh, needing more time to see what those changes would be. Um, there was some questions about the proposed changes that I had submitted, uh, which is in your packet. Um, in my version, I have a proposed vision. Uh, which would be the proposed mission statement. Um, and under the proposed mission, those would be our duties. Um, and those are my only recommendations. The proposed value was just um, decorum for our uh, for our commission in the event that we didn't have anything set in place, but we do have the handbook and we have a now Zoom and in-person decorum for public comments. So that was just an additional step that I know that during that discussion, we we mentioned that we may not need it um, at all because we have other things in place. Uh, but those are my proposed uh, changes um, with the existing ordinance and the replacement verbiage. Through the chair. Just for clarification for the staff, um, it is the recommendation by Commissioner Lobo to replace all of the current duties currently under Chapter 2.28A through L and replace them with the five, with the seven um, bullets under C Commissioner Lobo's adopted work plan. And I just wanted for clarification that that is the recommendation currently right now um, for the commission to discuss and then provide feedback and make other suggestions of potential um, amendments. So for clarification, you're saying um, 22.28010 is she's looking to change that. L, I see a comment for each of those. I see a change for each of those with some of them highlighted. And I don't know what the highlights necessarily mean other than it's repetitive, possibly. Commissioner Lobo. Yes. So on the first page under duties of commission 12 listed, that's what we currently have right now. Um, that is what section 2.28.030 duties is under. So that those are exact same language. I think I may have forgotten one word on one of the highlighted areas but those are exactly the same. So if you look at section 2.28.030 under duties, where it says the duties of the Recreation and Park Commission shall be two, and then it lists A through L, right. those are exactly the same as my proposed changes where it says duties of commissions 12 listed. This is the background. That is just reiterating what we have in our um, ordinance so that we wouldn't go back and forth. My proposed uh, replacement of those starts on page two. So if you flip it over, 
uh, under proposed mission. And there's, it's a, yes. So if there's little boxes next to it where you can check it, those are the replacement of that section. Oh. Oh, so it's on the second page. They double. I thought what you uh, what you italicized here were your recommendations. No, recommendations. so that was the confusion we had last time at the last meeting when we when we got a copy of this. We got a copy of what we already had. So where it says proposed changes under letter A, it says background, and it gives you the background. Like we were established in 1954. Our current duties are the following. Our current mission is the mission of Seaside Recreation Parks. Um, and then on the second bullet point, it says proposed vision, mission, and value statement. And where, where, are you on the old one now or are you on the new one? The new one. So if you flip that page over, so right behind it. are the same. No, turn it around. It's doubled on that back. There's a back page, right? L. No, the highlighted one that you're holding. Yeah, that one? Back. No. No, there's nothing on the back. Oh. Oh. Oh, I don't know why you, yours doesn't have that then. Why not? Oh, maybe. That's, are you looking at that's the, the last one. month one? Oh. That's last. Yeah. Oh. If you look at today's packet, mm, right. it's the same page that you were just looking at that you had from last packet. <clears throat> I thought I had that from last time. The these pages. Yes, those pages are in the new time. packet. Those same exact pages you see where the highlighted is. So that's what you were just looking at. If you right. put that page over right behind it, you'll see the bulleted points where it says proposed mission. Those are the duties that I'm I'm looking to replace. So it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little check boxes. Okay. Those are the proposed changes. I was confused about that. Which Those... is why we had it, which is why we talked about it last meeting. Yeah, and no, we I didn't wouldn't. have a we didn't have the second but... page. And then we we came to an understanding that this was just a re replication of the ordinance so that we have all of the information in one area. So what we currently have is page one, and the proposed changes are on page two. And just for clarification, we are not proposing changing section 2.28010 or 2.28020. And what no. are those? Well, one establishes the created, there is a created recreation park commission, which is 010, and then 020 is the Recreation and Park Commission shall consist of nine regular members. The appointed members of the commission shall hold office for three years. And those are not being changed. We are only changing the, we are only recommending changes to the duties. Correct. That's 2.28.030. And that's why we're planting so many trees so they can have paper. <laughs> I, I guess it's good we're having this because I I don't feel comfortable with just one person making major changes to our ordinance. So I know that's why we're doing this. And I unknowingly was looking for some reason, I thought this was what we were proposing and I was comparing it to this and there were little differences, not big ones, but um, I thought this was the work plan you were proposing. No, so right, right underneath that on letter C, it's the work plan proposals. So that third page, if you flip that third page over, right there on letter number C, it says work proposal. Oh, okay. And so- um, And there's five- So that's the work items. plan proposals that you're recommending. Five items. No, those we've already done when, when, we, did, when we did our work plan. Mm -hmm. That's not part of the ordinance. Yeah. That was just for our work plan. 
which the commission approved, I believe, two meetings ago. Yeah. Advisory body for active transportation plan. We approved that. Yes. We did. Yeah. yeah. I don't... Okay. All right. So I guess what then I would like to I would like to ask is this is going away? No, uh, we are just I'm amending. Sorry, I'm, I'm just not getting it. We we are amending our commission ordinance in order to open up our abilities as far as our duties because our duties hasn't changed since the inception of this committee. And so we're only changing the, the duty section of our ordinance, which is what we're going to uh, be working on, what decisions we're, we're looking forward to making. Um, the suggestions that I made incorporates our 12 duties that we have now, but at, at a much larger scope than just saying, trees are gonna be on this area. It, it gives us an, a, the ability to kind of say, okay, FOSTA said they're willing to take on that. That's what we're gonna put on our work plan. So it coincides with our work plan um, target points. And how does this fit into the actual work plan um, format that we have to use? It doesn't. So let's see if I can try and clarify this. Basically, right now, this document you have here, this is if you went to our city code page where it says chapter 2.28, this is what's going, what you're going to find. Okay. The recommendation is to take out all the language that's currently, and this is just the current recommendation, and this is why the commission is here discussing it is to take out this, the each bullet point that says A, B, C, D, E, all the way through L. Replace it, replace it with the seven bullet points that Commissioner Lobo has here, which then would then be A, B, C, D, e, all the way down. However, the commission can decide whether or not that if they want to go through here. Well, you know what? Um, for example, I really like uh, B. I want to keep B as is, right? So then if the discussion behooves itself to keep B in with the addition to what Commissioner Lobo put in, then we'll have eight. It could go with any of them. Or if you decide there's um, discussion on any of Commissioner Lobo's topics. Well, maybe we want to change the wording on this. This is what we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out the wording and the potential amendments that would be recommended to the city council prior to us actually moving forward with going through the process of changing the okay, ordinance. Now I get it. So this is going to be proposed to be this. Yes. Yeah, I get I get it. Okay. And then I can read them out so that you all can understand. They are they are the same, essentially, what we have. They're just condensed. So like if we're uh, to recommend and make suggestions concerning any matter pertaining to parks, playgrounds, and other recreational facilities, which may be brought before the city council to serve as a city or to recommend fees or charges to be paid by residents and non-residents for the use of city recreational facilities provided. However, the city council at any time may review the fees or changes or changes and abolish change or modify such fees or charges or take such other action as the city council deems necessary in connection therewith. May, may, may I ask you something? Yeah. Would you be able to compare what Part, which of these A, B, C, D, through L you have put in which bullet point? 
So I think three meetings ago, I would have been able to, I don't have no <laughs> notes with me now. Uh, but if you, you know, if you put them side to side, you can kind of see, see that. Yeah. yeah. So now I'm needing to do that because I did it the wrong way the first time. So, but anyhow, thank you for letting me comment so long. Thank you. Um, so I think to serve as the city's bicycle and pedestrian advisory committee, which is on uh, the one, the page with the boxes, the little check boxes, it's the fourth box down. It coincides with uh, B on the work plan proposals. It seems to me like that would be something that fall under the traffic advisory committee and not us. It seems like kind of, I don't know, just something that doesn't need to be there. It's, I'm almost certain that that's something that they're going to be addressing, especially with all these new changes that are coming into the city. I don't know. Just throwing it out there. Uh, yes, you are correct on that. When it comes to the trails and bicycles, we will be responsible because it was part of our master plan. So I put it on there so that we can create the body and perhaps um, uh, transportation will take that on, but we would still have a seat on that commission or that uh, um, active body so that we have a say instead of um, not having a say at all when it comes to our trails, because that's really what it's it's targeting, it's targeting the bicycling um, and pedestrian advisory committee. So when we talk about transportation, they don't have that advisory committee. They, they will either seek us for it and we would have to take on that um, or they would, I don't know what they would do in that capacity because we don't have that yet, but we will be having it. And it's just thinking in the future because the trails, the four tag trails are gonna be coming in and that is a, a capital expense, I believe, or capital project. Not through us, though. Four tag is not through us. So the four tag trail, yes, will be coming through, but the, that's through TMC and through four tag themselves will be providing the funding for that. We may find some, but as my not to my knowledge, not at this point. I would make a recommendation, maybe. Not to serve, because basically the way that this is being read right now is saying that the commission will serve as the advisory committee. I think it would be make recommendations for active bicycle and pedestrian improvement projects, maybe, or something to that nature where we're not creating like having the commission create a committee or it can be in there to provide recommendation and potentially participate in any committees or that oversee that type I, the wording is a little i would have to you know take some time but that's kind of what i would so it's not like the commission is spearheading it i mean yeah. we don't have that we don't have that committee right now um and my thought process is four tags is coming in also the trails from havana and um Lincolnham, all of those will be um in place but also transportation is going to be coming through seaside um so in order for us to have some sort of handle on it create that committee we don't necessarily need to head it but at some point we want to be a part of it um, because it will eventually come in in the same pathway as our master plans, because our master plans has trails for pedestrians and um, bicycles. So that was a thought process. But again, we, we, we don't have to spearhead it. We can leave it as is. And when the time comes, maybe transportation will create that committee. Uh, but it was a suggestion because we do have it on our work plan. Um, as Commissioner uh, Moulton uh, pointed out, we have it as Section B, but that's not something that we, and we have it as at a capital improvement, uh, So, but it's not something that we have to engage in this year or even now. It's, it's just in our work plan for us to continue to have it as a, a 
as a reminder that this is coming down the pipeline. And eventually we will need to have this in order to have a voice and the community have a voice on what that's gonna look like here locally. And even when Fortag comes in, you know, we're going to want to have a say, even though they they do have the funding, they they will be the overseeing, the project manager, for lack of a better word. Um, but again, it's not something we need to have now. It's not something we need to work on now, but just thinking in the future what that would look like. So what's your pleasure, uh, Vice Chair Nielsen? I, I honestly would like to see this struck from this work plan or proposed mission or whatever you're going to call it, um, because we do have a master plan. We do have safety and traffic. We don't need to take on another, uh, create another body of people who need to get in on this. If we want to make a comment, we can write a letter to the other commission, we can go be to those particular meetings. Um, and we have a lot of input we can give without putting this in our, our work plan. That's that's my opinion, thank you. That's a valid opinion. As long as we're advised of the meetings that are going on discussing such stuff, because that doesn't always happen. Well, they're supposed to be. Anyway. Okay, so what's your pleasure, Commissioner? Oh, Commissioner Moulton. Sorry. Um, I just want to make sure I'm clear. It's already in the work plan. There's no getting around that. But as far as the proposed changes to the ordinance that we're discussing right now, the... Um, I would agree. I, for me, I don't see it as something that, let me ask you this, Dan, or is for tag is TMC going to be responsible? They're just putting them in and then they're like, here you go. Seaside, your guys are in charge of maintenance and upkeep. Correct. So it's going to fall into us anyways, without needing to create any new entity or body or committee. Um, and the language here is, to me is like, okay, we want more. We want to like pull something in that is not currently in anyone's direct purview. And I think that parks and recreation is more than enough for one committee. I, I mean, this is something that I feel should be taken you know, to city council, if you guys think that this is a needed thing, if you think that traffic advisory and parks and rec and uh, neighborhood improvement can't put their heads together, then make a committee for this. But I don't think we should be the ones to be like, hey, we're going to do this for you guys, because it's just another thing lumped on top of everything that we're already doing. So that's just my thoughts. Thank you. Good comments. Any other further comments? What, what do we want to do with this? Okay. I agree. I mean, if we don't want to be solely responsible of that committee, then we shouldn't add it to our duties. Um, we do have it on our work plan, but I believe the work plan is, is a, a live document, so we can always update it instead of being the advisory body for that active transportation plan perhaps just have it there as uh, participants of a future active body. Um, because eventually we're, 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 we're going to have to give some sort of information on this, um, specifically with the Lincoln and Cunningham um, trails that are gonna be there. Uh, so it would behoove us to still continue to have it on our work plan, but perhaps not make it a necessity as a duty for our commission. I don't know if that, if that would help. Um, and perhaps we can come back and, and change that work plan proposal uh, number B, letter B, to be uh, active participants to the transportation plan uh, with areas of interest that we may have as they come about. 
Um, that way in our work plan, that could just be a side note that whenever that comes up, then we can decide, okay, we're going to make that a priority because now we're talking about it. Now they need our input and then go about it that way, but not necessarily be the head of that committee within our duties in the ordinance. Commissioner Moulton. Thank you. So again, it's already on the work plan. So we don't even have to worry. You could like literally take this whole page out and we're done with it. But on the ordinance part is what I'm specifically, um, I just want to be clear, specifically the ordinance, because if it took 60 or 70 years for this change to be made now, I don't want like my grandkids, grandkids having to like deal with like something that's, you know what I mean? Like, um, because it, it does, it goes far past any of our tenures on this committee for one, and it's in the work plan. It's a lock. We're not going back until at least next year to discuss this. So we can do everything we want with it. I'm just saying, as far as the ordinance goes, um, that I see no reason for it to be in the actual ordinance. That's all. Thanks. It is quite aged, almost as old as I am. <laughs> Not this one. Anyway. But keep in mind also that whatever we do, it's up to the council to say yay or nay and do whatever they deem appropriate with our recommendations. So, yes, Vice Chair Nielsen. One thing I see in here that is missing is our urban forest and um, plans for increasing our urban forest and and uh, trees and parks and our responsibility for that. Um, I know on previous copies you have, oh, here it is. On our, um, let's see, you have on H, I, and K, it mentions it has to do with trees, trails, parks, trees, and forestry. And I'm hoping we can combine those three bullet points into H, I, and K. Of not, um, Original. The original, yes. yeah, correct. And you you highlighted the ones that had to do with trees and no, forests. No, no. Oh. Oh, the actual ordinance, okay. So you're you're saying I'm saying H? that's nowhere in our. Um, but we're not proposed work. Excuse me, I'm, right. we're not changing that part. We're not right. changing it, but it's not reflected in here. Oh, I think I guess you're right. We are talking Did, about this. Wouldn't that be something you, that would need to be reflected zero, in zero. there? Can you uh, repeat which item numbers on the actual ordinance you, you're saying is not reflected on the it, down uh, on H, which I don't know what number that would be. Develop, keep current, and aid in the facilitation. Okay, H. Uh -huh. Well, in the highlighted part. It does say develop and review annually a long range, a long range plan for trees and parks, both naturally occurring and planned. In the uh, highlighted part, that's what we currently have, though. That's what she's talking about. Okay. That is not. You're saying that that's not on the proposed changes oh. of the seven. Yes, I think we could. Too much. Oh. Remove the to serve the bicycle pedestrian and put um, our our urban forestry obligation um, that we're tasked with in there. I'm sorry. This is like reading the Iliad. <laughs> it's kind of hard <laughs> to keep it straight. Okay. So you're proposing 
we reword these. So three. So combine four. in our ordinance in chapter 2.28, in our ordinance, H, I, and J, combine those three. No, in the work plan. Well, yeah, in the ordinance. Okay, so in the ordinance, we combine okay. H, I, and J, mm. and put it in the new proposed duties, replacing the to serve as the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee. With a rewarding and uh, condensing of, of those, those three of in those that four, section. actually. There's four of them. Four. I think that that would be. What was the fourth one? H, I, J, and what? Oh, G, too. <laughs> oh, G. Basically, G through L, all. Are all are in regards to urban forestry. Yeah, which is a big part of our responsibility. So we replace. Do we need to? You want to make a motion on that? We're not making a motion right now, but we're 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 okay. taking the recommendation. So right now, the one I have two recommendations so far that I've heard to remove to serve as the city's bicycle and pedestrian advisory committee from. The proposed changes and then to combine g through l out of our current ordinance and make them one proposed change to add to the other ones yes yes and then i have one more yes, recommendation go ahead. Go ahead. on to recommend fees or charges to be paid by residents non-residents for use of city recreational facilities I think we can condense that. And the wording I was looking at was after uh, the use of city recreational facilities provided the city council, no, with the city council's approval or however you would want to word that. I don't think we need, however, the city council any time may review the fees, changes, abolish, change, or modify. Those are kind of all the same thing. Um, the, the council has that anyways, that purview. Uh, so really what it would be, you can make the recommendations, right? Mm -hmm. And then during the budget cycle, the council will already adopt or make changes to the fees to the fee schedule. So really we don't you don't need to put in there that the city council can make that because it's already a given that the council can so so we can take out upon their approval etc in theory you can take out everything after recreation facilities yes i think i would like to recommend but you might want to add recreation facilities programs and events right so you're hitting all aspects of the rec department, not just the facility piece. Okay. Okay. You got all that? And I have one more thing. Just, and, and... Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Yes. Take care. Thanks, Chris. Be well. See you. Any last uh, recommendations before you leave? See you. Go Union. And my last recommendation is to on on the um, actually I have two the next to the last seek and provide input seek from community and provide input and concerns oh from the community at large seek pro input and concerns. For the community, for the community at large, um, starting with provide input and or concerns from the, I think we should have the something like seek input, seek, seek input and concerns from the community at large instead of provide. Okay. Just and the last one help facilitate. Facilitate. Input, okay, facilitate, that's, 
What do you think? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same word, just more proper. So facilitate input and concerns from the community at large. So that just directs us that we have to have some sort of something in order to gain that that information, whether that be at our regular meeting or if we want to do something aside from that. And my last question is, what do we mean help advise with youth and adult athletic programs and field user groups? I don't know what that is. Um, so my thought process on that was um, field user groups, when groups come and ask to rent our locations or rent certain areas like Catino Park um, to help advise on that. Perhaps there's a program that we may know of that, that could be utilized. Perhaps we know of someone that uh, could help the recreation department on that avenue if there isn't a process, a uh, policy and process in place on how to do that. I don't know what we do now as far as like if there was groups that wanted to come and use Catino Park on a on a consistent basis, how that looks. Um, and actually uh, perhaps meet with these groups at some point to to let them know of the array of facilities we may have in the future. Um, but just getting involved with that with those groups. Um, right now, from my understanding, we they just go to the recreation department. We never see those groups. They don't come here. I think one group came during city council meeting to talk about lights. So perhaps to kind of negate that conversation in this capacity versus them going directly to city council and asking for those, those groups asking for items there. And uh, perhaps we can have some sort of advisement on that so that the recommendation comes from us. Um, and we seek that recommendation from the groups and the people that rent from us. What is the process generally? Well, Catino Park is an interesting situation. And because of the nature of it being the only real facility that we have really on the peninsula that's kind of like that, and the amount of requests we get to use it, we have a process where we really only allow, we book it out a month in advance, you know, and we try to be as fair as possible because if I did it on a first come first serve basis, I would have a group come in and request every day, all hours for the entire year. But because we have so many groups, you know, we limit what we do now. We, you know, you can have four hours on a weekend and you can get, you know, two hours, two nights a week is where we kind of landed to give as much opportunity for every group to come in. There are some, um, there are some outstanding groups that get more that have MOUs with us. For example, Seaside Raiders. Um, they have a, an established MOU with the, that the city council approved, so they get priority usage. Um, MPUSD, if MPUSD needs the the space, and we don't have city run programs in there, they get first um, priority on that. And um, Seaside Pony, I've limited Seaside Pony's use at Catino because they do have Mets and Soper. However, they do need a place to play for the older kids because those fields are too small for them. So they don't get, you know, first priority, but I do reserve some time for them um, during baseball season. So we do have some existing agreements, groups that have kind of been grandfathered in, but the new groups right now, you know, we this is the process we've been going. Um, however, you know, I think having the commission facilitate some discussions could be beneficial. I will say though, that during the master plan process, it was hard to get any kind of feedback from them after numerous attempts. So a lot of them are, you know, there's a lot of mom and pop soccer groups and leagues and stuff within our community. So the, there is a need, um, but it's hard with one field. My thought process was also like looking into the future. Um, 
kind of taking some of that bulk uh, needed information uh, because our department, our recs department is not fully staffed in a, in a way that we would like it to be, perhaps take some of that load off and, and take it on when we become larger and have more facilities kind of talking through those groups and seeing who those groups are and perhaps saying, okay, we know that those MOUs are already there. We know that they have priority in these areas, but maybe so that we can open it up and bring more community into that and also have like an open line of communication. Um, because as Dan mentioned, I didn't see any of those groups that are master plan uh, discussions. And when we talk about that, it's important because that is a revenue source. And if we're talking about a revenue source uh, to help in the capacity of maybe gathering information for Dan's presentations could add some weight to that. And if we can facilitate those conversations within our commission, we can potentially have more of a imprint to the city council. Like, look, it's not just our users of these uh, facilities, but it's those that are coming in and spending the money to use the facilities as well. Okay. Go ahead. I I can understand your thought process. To me, it's another layer of delay for groups that are seeking a place to use and that it creates more time involved and I feel like staff has a handle on what is available and kind of keeping it even and fair and for us to try to I, I, I just don't feel like that would be something I would feel comfortable with. I don't think we're taking on the the actual capacity of determining who gets the field and all that, but we're taking in the conversations and the need of perhaps groups that haven't been able to um, get in and, and schedule, uh, which could potentially be revenue for the, the city, potentially could, um, if we have enough need, could alter our master plan because what if we have 70 different groups? I don't know. I don't know if we have 70 different groups that could say, hey, we've been wanting to, but we can't because there is a set and there isn't availability in Seaside. That could be uh, ammo to potentially get another facilities um, sooner rather than later. But as the verbiage, it could be, we're just helping advise. So if Dan were to come and say, we don't have any more capacity to rent at Catino. And I have seven groups that say that they wanna bring in um, free uh, clinics, soccer clinics or free any type of clinics and we don't have capacity, then if those people show up, what are we gonna say at this commission about it? They're not gonna show up. They may show up at Dan's office, but there's no recourse around that. Sure, if I may. From what I'm, what I'm, what I'm hearing Commissioner Lobo say, this would be something that like the, what the kind of the homeless commission does, they have community listening sessions. So what I am envisioning potentially with this one topic is that the Parks and Rec Commission could hold a community listens, listening session specifically about field use. And it doesn't necessarily need to be, it could be facility use, right? You can have one that has, and when I talk about facility, I'm talking about, it could be sports fields, it could be gyms, it could be skate park, it could be tennis courts, right? It could be athletic facilities and we're getting soliciting input on what their needs and wants are. And that could be a, you know, a good discussion for the commission to facilitate that's specific for that. That's kind of how I'm interpreting that item that would be potentially in the ordinance. And that's just one, you know, um, example. Commissioner oh. I Okay, the one thing I would like to see if that remains, there is a rewording of that. Help advise with youth and adult athletic program. I don't know what the wording would be, but it more like along the lines of facilitate um, 
an advisory. I don't know what the wording would be, but something that fits in more with how we facilitate input from the community. It could be where you're combining those bottom two, right? Where it's in, you're facilitating input or concerns from the community at large for parks and recreation within the city of Seaside. But then instead of that, it could be parks and recreation and field user groups or something where, where it's all encompassed through that one is the because it is all falls in parks and right but but you're but you're identifying it specifically in there it's a good idea combining them uh commissioner um yes i agree i think that if we combine it that would be great um again we're just seeking as a, lack of a better word seeking information about that uncharted area um just and not at the capacity again to actually take ownership of how that policies and process are done, but more so to have like listening sessions or a town hall to discuss. Um, but I want to make sure that we identify that group because we're not. So if we want to combine those, then that would be great. I just want to make sure that that we are putting those groups in there in the event that. You know, we may need another facility because we have an a influx of people that want to rent. We do need more facilities, that's for sure. Yeah. Any more discussion on that? Huh? You sure? Uh, we got trees. Oh. There's six now. The what? No, we're, yeah, we're not doing any of that. So, no. Oh, okay. We're not going on to the next then. We're not doing the proposed values at the last. Okay. At the last uh, meeting that we had in July, yeah, July, um, we said that the proposed values were redundant because it just talks about decorum and during our meetings. Right. We are specifically identifying duties that we want to add or subtract that are currently in the ordinance so we can make amendments. No further comments from me. Okay. <laughs> But the proposed value, those are all good points, you know. They are. Those are all, they should all be in the commissioner's handbook. Yeah, they are. I did this before we knew we had an updated <laughs> uh, handbook, so, which is why I think we had that discussion, like, this seems redundant because we already have this. So. Okay, so we're done with this item. Okay, I need to open it up for public comment. Members of the public in the chamber, please approach the podium. Members on Zoom, use the raise your hand feature or dial star nine. Seeing no one in the chambers approaching or no one on Zoom, uh, public comment is closed. Commissioner Lobo. Um, so just, just so that we are clear, we are removing the bicycle and pedestrian advisory combining G through L to replace that and then changing the verbiage on the last two bullet points of the new duties um, to reflect the changes that we spoke about this evening. Basically combining those two and, and, right. and tweaking it to, yes. to flow. Okay, um, and then that'll come back to us at the next meeting. Yeah. And then we'll vote on it, and then it will 
after that, we'll go for recommendation to the council. And so. And then that way too, then the commission, anyone that missed this meeting can take a bite at the apple and, you know, provide any more recommendations. Okay. Do I need public comment again? No. Oh. There was no action taken, so there's okay. no vote or anything at this point. Staff has some direction to update uh, the proposed changes. That's correct. Okay. Uh, moving on to the next item uh, would be reports from recreation staff. All right. Since our last meeting, um, we've held, what was that? It was in the end of July. So summer is concluded. The kids are back in school. Um, so we we've started that whole new you know cycle. We held a new um, another fall swim lesson registration. So everything we're all booked up through the fall. Um, we really we had the last couple um, blues in the park. Heard nothing but a lot of positive feedback about um, each event, which has been nice. And now we're we're gearing up for the city the next couple of events that we have. We have Oaxaca by the Sea. We have the city birthday, 70th birthday. And I'm happy to announce we will be trying something new this year. The council approved us to have a drone show. So I'll be working with Sky Elements. And if you haven't seen them, they are in the finals of America's Got Talent. They're somewhere in there, like they're in the live show for America's Got, Got Talent. But if you watch that show, don't expect anything that they're doing for us here in Seaside because we don't have that kind of budget. But, it, it, you know, it, it's it's kind of cool that we're going to have their base package, but it will be, um, you know, something different on October 13th. So we're looking forward to that. And we also, at the last council meeting, um, approved the five nominations um, for this year's star cycle. So we're looking at having the event in October. Really just kind of planning on all that stuff. And before you get into your next um, report, I some of you know, some of you may not know, um, there was a comment that Nisha Patel did leave the city. Um, so she is no longer with us. And at the current moment, I am overseeing public works and engineering. So I have taken on that aspect as well. That concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions or anything from oh, Commissioner Lobo? Thank you for taking on the double job here. I uh, don't envy you, but I thank you for stepping up in the time of need. Um, question with the drone show. I know we talked about it uh, during the council meeting if our logo was going to be part of that, and I'm not sure if that's still possible, if we could do that. Um, also, like, how long is the show? Um, I briefly heard that it would be over at Roberts Lake and we would be seeing it from the lawn. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't know if I heard that correctly. So the show is 12 minutes. Um, and that's really, I guess, the standard because of the battery life. A lot of the drones, they need to make sure that they can land and whatnot. But the show will actually be at Laguna Grande. Oh. So they're going to be staging at Laguna Grande Park. Um, and the show will be up over the lake. And it'll be visible, like, if we're looking out that way, towards the lake from the lawn. So over that way. And I am working with them with the design. So, yes, I'm going to try... And I'm going to give them the logo, but whether or not they'll be able to do the logo with the 100 drones, they'll be able to do some um, some variation of that for sure. Maybe just to see, you know, what we're, we're, we're going to work to try and get it as best as possible. <laughs> hey, thank you, Dan. Uh, report some park staff. All right, let me put on my other hat. Uh, <laughs> so, and then Leslie would normally be coming and giving this report. She's out of town today. There isn't a lot of updates with the parks. Um, however, I did want to let everyone know that the contract for the Lincoln Cunningham trails is currently being routed for 
um, signatures with the city manager. So once that gets signed, then they're going to open up the bids for construction. So, or no, they're going to be able to proceed with construction. That is for construction. So once we get all that up and running, so construction should be starting here within the next few weeks, ideally. Um, and then also while it's not parks, it's kind of parks, the uh, Fremont medians, that contract is also in the queue for um, the city manager to sign. So once we get that up and going, they'll be starting work on the Fremont median. Um, I don't have a detailed scope of what that's going to entail, but um, that one will also, it's technically falls under parks. Um, the NIC, you may remember, um, allocated funds for benches on General Jim Moore. So we are getting four benches that are being installed. They started pouring some of the concrete last week. So that should be um, finishing up um, within the next week or so. So we'll have four benches between Hilby and San Pablo. And they identified eight locations, but we're doing four right now because that's what we the funding was for. And just a couple of brief updates. It was nice to see FOSPA to give the update on the volleyball at um, Highland Otis. So that's great. There was a question from Commissioner Gaines about the swing set at Sabado. That swing set has been installed and it is um, ready to go. And it's it's all good. And then there was another park that I had on Sabado. Oh, gosh, of course it's going to escape me i know that but there was another one um i think we're good though so those are kind of the updates with the parks um that i have right now going back to recreation i just also wanted to just say that for those of you that attended the exotics on saturday Overall, it was a success, you know, the amount of people that came here and, you know, just so the commission, just remind the commission that those applications come through the rec department. So we worked with the exotics team. We worked with police and fire and public works to help make the show, you know, go on like that. Um, so while putting on a show that large in any city has its challenges, Overall, it was a success. There's just, you know, some little tweaks here and there that we'll figure out. Um, but we also had the Concourse de Limones here on City Hall Lawn. If you didn't come by that one, this place was packed as well. So we were we were the hot ticket on um, Saturday for sure during car week. So, you know, and the rec department had all the special event permits come in through each one of those shows. And then we had the poor show as well. That was on Monday and that was another um, successful event. So I have a question about that, uh, about the exotics. Does, do we get any kind of information about what the benefit is for us in Seaside for the city of Seaside? My, they pay us. They pay all the associated fees. They pay for staff costs. They, you know. They don't give us any money though. They don't. They, don't they, they pay the money. initial, you know, permit fees and things like that. Um, I will say that the benefit to the city really is an economic boost to a lot of those businesses on uh, Broadway, specifically the restaurants. I know they sell out of all their, you know, their food and a lot of them, you know, I believe in years past, I haven't gotten the numbers yet, but in years past, um, they ran out of food halfway through the event. Um, and it's, you know, it's bringing awareness to Seaside. I think more and more people are coming here um, because we do have some of these unique events and whether or not they're shopping on Broadway, they may be going and getting food at other places, you know, outside of Broadway. So, you know, you think 30,000 plus people within a, a five hour span that's pretty significant can you tell us about any of the negative effects i think there i mean the, the biggest negative is just too many people i think we've kind of you know that that's a lot of people on broadway and so public safety is you know a bit challenged by how many people are out there we didn't have any um there was no medical emergencies or anything like that this year so that was positive you know we get an overwhelm you know garbage and things like that you know those are the kind of the basic negatives and traffic right you know if you try to go anywhere in the city on saturday it was 
it was taking a little bit longer than normal. So, you know, those are the, the main pieces. You know, we've yet to have a debrief, so I don't have a full um, the report right now, but like those are some of the basics that I've heard. Do, do the, does the city council report out to the public on that at all? I will be bringing a car week um, after action to city council in September at either the first or second meeting in September. Once, once I schedule our meetings and we, and when I can get all the information from all the organizers um, and we work, you know, get all the numbers from PD and fire. Commissioner Lobo. Um, I think it's a great event. I, I know it's a lot of people and, and, um, this year it seemed like the people were more stagnant. Like at one point it was like, really like you couldn't walk even through it. And then like towards the end of the day, it started kind of staggering out. There was more room. Um, I know that a lot of the issues last year where people were getting blocked in the, the parking on the back of Broadway was really, um, hectic. Um, but there was businesses that were opening up their parking lots for parking, um, it's Monterey something now. It used to be Tides. People were parking over on that. I parked over there and walked all the way over here. Um, so there's a lot of people walking. So I saw that. Um, I think it was a little different this year because they barricaded over towards the light of where where Broadway is and Damani. Damani, yeah. Um, they barricaded that, but also the other side they had barricades for a VIP section. And I know the VIP section last year wasn't that, wasn't that huge or it wasn't that capacity, um, which I had an opportunity to go in there and kind of mingle. Um, I, the only drawback that, that I have with exotics on Broadway is that the city does not have a more imprint in this. Um, I got to talk to the owner of Bugatti, Porsche, so many individuals that I talked that, just are unaware of what Seaside is. And they're really like personable. I got context information. So I don't know if um, Dan, perhaps we can have some sort of like a table or maybe like one person out of each commission that has the capability to be either at that VIP or, or somewhere in that area where we have um, economic growth coming in because that's really what that area is that VIP is economic growth because of the numerous people that we have come in and 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 it's just not owners of companies it's actual um influencers there's educators um uh, I think they only met one council member that I that I spoke to um some of these folks that they only met one council member but they haven't they don't, they don't know anyone. And so these are people that are traveling from other states. And so I don't know if that's something that we can do with the organizer. Um, I think I talked to one or two of them. I, I don't really remember their names. A lot of people to remember. Um, but it was great conversation and just them wanting to know about Seaside. And even if it's just not a formal thing, maybe Dan can be there or some representation of us. Uh, other than us just showing up and be like, hey, who are you? Or or someone asking me who I was when we were taking pictures. And I was just like, oh, I'm I'm just someone from the city. Like I I live in the city. But it we had a at one point there were over 30,000 people. And there's 32,000, between 32 and 34,000 people in the city of Seaside. That means we had like 60,000 people in the city of Seaside at one point. And you can see it. And so a lot of the car owners also were very personable. They This is a mission for them to be here. This year, I think we were a highlight uh, versus anywhere else, even at Pebble Beach. People were talking about this event because it's the people's event. And so I want to make sure that we understand that it's the people's event because you are literally in a car and someone can be this close to you and touch you and give you high fives. Like it's that close. And so... I don't know what we need to do. I don't know if our commission needs to come and talk to the council when they do the action report, the after action report, so that we have a more staple. I know uh, Mr. Arizola talked about Seaside Creates being open, but even if that was open, like people are going to pass by it. It's just like there's certain areas that people will just hover around the stage, that VIP area, and then coming up to where the cars are driving in and going to be stationed. You can literally walk with the cars as they're coming in 
and and walking to that. So that that area is is amazing. I really think that we should close Broadway further up. Um, yeah, a wider section and close both lanes. On, and I know it's going to create more traffic, but the amount of people, and I was just thinking like if there was a situation, a safety situation, if we needed to get out, I was looking at all like the exit areas and there isn't enough room when we're just closing that one lane. It really should be both lanes if we're gonna do it or all of Broadway going this way. So that there's like, there's enough room for our police officers on bikes, motorcycles to maneuver through people because that's really what needs to be on. Like police is on bicycles and and bikes, like motorcycle bikes. Uh, Cause if someone was trying to run to get to an emergency, the officers wouldn't be able to get through there. Like it just wasn't. I also want us to have a more staple in there because where they put our fire department was like, at the end of, I don't know if that was like done purposely, but I was just like, why are they in the island by themselves? We requested so they could have accessibility. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, at least some more more signs of where they are because they were like in the island of their own, and I, I, it's understandable. But just so people know that, like, oh, this is where you could go. But other than that, the business owners were out. Um, oh, one big thing: Wi-Fi capability, uh, just in general. Uh, Seaside has an issue in that Broadway area. No one had access to Wi-Fi. You could access it, but you couldn't post. You couldn't pay with Apple Pay if you needed to. That whole area. I mean, people were like, can you post? Can you post? And nobody can post. So to actually get the pictures out, to get people out, like once we are, we're able to post, you started seeing an influx of people just showing up. So I don't know if we need to like, address the Wi-Fi issue, at least our downtown, because that is supposed to be our staple. Um, there's no accessibility to that. Even the business owners could not charge certain things. Um, people, either you had cash or you just didn't. It's first time hearing, it's first time hearing that one, so thank you. Yeah, I went to mostly all the businesses and and talked to them and and bought stuff from there. There was like four of them that I couldn't buy with my card. I had to get cash. Um, and I came back after <laughs> to be like, here, I, I'm going to pay you. There was a guy that I paid water for because he, he couldn't use. He ended up sending me the money back. I was surprised. I didn't think he would. But Wi-Fi is, is a big thing. Thank you, Commissioner Lobo, for your report. So thank you. Tim. No more reports. Hey, reports from commissioners. Do you have another report? Oh. Uh, <laughs> I, I went to the city council meeting. Congratulations to our chair, Mr. Bobby Maxwell, that is receiving a star. Uh, long time coming, and I'm glad that we're giving people their flowers while they're still here and they can appreciate it. Uh, again, Car Week was amazing. Yes, the tourism is crazy, but um, just for our city to make a bigger deal about it, like for us, you know, Concord Italiano is is big too. There's like, there's unveilings that could happen there. So, Car Week was great, um, and I think that was it. I don't think I did anything else. Yeah. Thank you, Vice Chair Nelson. Thank you. Well, last night I went to Palenque Arts for a Indigenous Indian jazz concert. And it's called the Albert, the Delbert Anderson Trio. It was, I felt like it was um, jazz festival quality. Excellent, excellent music. It was a trio. And the leader, Al Delbert, is a um, Navajo Indian. And he is melding Navajo traditions and stories into his music. And he calls it kind of um, hip hop, funk, Indian, jazz kind of mixture. And it's it was really excellent, excellent music. And I couldn't believe how few people were there. I'd say 50 people maybe at the max. And they had just performed at San Francisco Jazz Center and uh, 
Kawamba Jazz Center. And it was amazing to see such a great jazz trio in our city at Palenque Arts. And that's the first time I've ever been there. And I heard that they may be expanding. And uh, that's really good news. Then um, I helped out at the Hawaiian themed dance last Thursday at Oldemeyer Center. And again, it's always so fun to do that and to see the people that come there to dance. They dressed in Hawaiian garb and it was just, it's just so delightful. They always lift my spirits when I'm there. And I get to run back and forth and deliver meals, which I'm comfortable with, rather than being out there dressed in a Hawaiian skirt. I'd you know, I'd rather be working it then. And it, it's just really a great thing that they do every month. So thank you very much. Um, I'm curious about the report on the exotics and how it impacts our city and what it did for our city. Sometimes I feel like uh, we're being taken advantage of in some way, but I don't know. Um, it does bring attention to Seaside, but then again, like uh, Commissioner Lobo said, we need to create some sort of, other than just the venue, some sort of relationship. And today I went over to um, Sand City by the, I don't know if it's a hotel. Are they building a hotel next to Costco? It is a hotel. Okay, it's a hotel. Behind the hotel mm -hmm. on the street, across the street, there is a really cool little pocket park that they uh, created there. It's really got some interesting um, play pieces. It's very unique and it's it's like a pocket park. So I would recommend driving over there to see it. You just go along with that street that goes along. Uh, Tioga. 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 The street that runs along towards the beach. Is that Tioga? Tioga. Okay. And then you turn behind the, um, well, you get to it from Tioga if you want to go inside the park because they have a big fence around it and there's only one opening. But it's really a neat park. Um, I took some pictures of it, and uh, I can show you if you want to see them. And um, that was it. Thank you. Okay. They they did that part before starting that project. It's a uh, like Native American themed. So, thank you for your report. <laughs> okay. I attended the National Night Out, which was out here on the lawn. And that same night was the NIC Commission meeting, which I came and attended for uh, to make some comments. <laughs> because they were working on their work plan, and I first applauded them for their efforts of volunteering on the commission and all that stuff. But then I voiced my displeasure with not being informed about being a part of their work plan ideas. So anyway, um, also attended the uh, Luau luncheon last week at the Oldermeyer Center. Um, that was really good. Um, the exotics, I did not attend. It was too crazy, too many people. I I have met with some of the business owners in, on Broadway. And some of them said it was the worst day of the year for them. Because, uh, for example, grocery outlet, there were people that were going into that store and opening beer and drinking it and throwing the cans down in the aisles and stuff. And it was, it, it happened quite a bit. They were really like displeased with the whole thing. Um, our police 
force was pretty much overwhelmed with the amount of people. And thank God there was no need for any kind of emergency services because there was really no way in and out of that area. And then there is still to this day, a lot of garbage around on the streets. And I hope that gets uh, taken care of soon. But I, I told the uh, business owners that I met with, because they were really displeased with that event, to talk to the city manager and come to the city council meeting and, and voice their concerns. So um, other than that, what else did I do? I do all kinds of things. I forget. Uh, it's okay. So thank you all for coming. Thanks for all the hard work that you do. Appreciate your volunteering. And this meeting is now adjourned. Our next meeting will be here September 16th, 530. Be well.